Welcome, stranger, to another ghastly tales narration. Dim the lights and pull up close to the fire. For this evening we bring you the chilling tale of a Faustian bargain with a demented twist. From author Mick Maz, this is The Feeble Mind. George had seen both his grandfather and father die of Alzheimer's. That dreaded affliction causing strong minds to crumble, turning well-sorted archives of memories into cluttered, fragmented heaps, ever degrading until nothing is left but an empty shell of a person. And after the doctor told him, with that fake sympathy that only men of medicine can feign, that considering his genes early onset Alzheimer's was a serious possibility, George decided that he would never follow the slow decay of his elders. It took him many a month to get everything ready. Days spent at various libraries, nights browsing the obscurest websites of the internet. Heinous acts were committed, dubious endeavours undertaken to get the necessary ingredients and trinkets. One night, after he had memorised the ritual by heart and his calculations of the moon and signs were correct, he called him. He had placed everything neatly in the clearing of the forest, where a huge slab of prehistoric stone made a perfect natural altar that had, in all probability, been used for like purposes many times during the age of man. By midnight, he was ready. He spoke the words, he burned the foul-smelling herbs in a chalice, and he cut the throat of the lamb, previously purchased from an unknowing farmer. He stood in front of the stone, eyes closed, listening intently to the sounds of the woods. All the insects and night birds had grown quiet. A gust of wind that he could not feel rustled the shrubs behind him. A pungent smell of rotting wood engulfed him. Then, like a slithering ice-cold tongue, the words entered his ears, a voice dripping with promise and deceit whispering to him in such an atonal and inhuman way that for a moment he feared he would regurgitate the quick meal he had hastily had that evening. A task for a gift. A life for a cure. A name to be erased. Could he do it? Could he take a life in order to save himself? George watched his trembling hand clenching a glass of whiskey and remembered those nights where his father, previously a proud man of strong intellect, wandered the house afraid and confused, muttering senseless fragments, not even recognising his own son. George finished his whiskey and made up his mind. Anything but such a horrible fate. Who was this man he was supposed to murder in cold blood? Did he even want to know? No, better to keep him an abstract figure, a thing without a past or a future, just a name. Charles Anders, a name he looked up in the yellow pages, writing down the address while his stomach turned and sweat dripped down his back, running his fishing knife against his thumb, drawing blood, seeing if it was as sharp as it needed to be. George rang the doorbell at 11 in the evening the next day. When the man opened the door, George jammed the knife in his throat and ran away. Two days later, George was reading the morning paper over eggs and coffee. The murder rested less heavy on him than he had imagined. Yes, there was almost a sense of pride. He had averted his destiny, taken matters into his own hands. He would not succumb to a feeble mind. Five minutes later, he dropped the paper, a horrible laugh welling up in his throat and, when finally erupting, lasting so long that his landlady called the police, who took the still laughing and incoherently babbling man to the nearest hospital. On the breakfast table, the grease from his eggs slowly forming a dark stain on the last red page, still lay the morning paper. 
a page of which the headline read, Leading Alzheimer's disease researcher Dr. Anders found murdered in home. Medical world in shock. This has been a Ghastly Tales production. Narration by Martin Yates, accompanying music by Mick Maz. For full credits, please see the description. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. If you have, please subscribe to Ghastly Tales on YouTube or find Ghastly Tales Presents on Facebook for more horror narrations, short films, reviews, live streams, discussion, and more. Oh, and before you go, I have one last thing for you to ponder. Let us imagine for a moment that we accept the premise of an everlasting soul and the existence of a hell, and while we are summoning demons to do our bidding, I don't see why we wouldn't. It is immediately obvious to anyone that the classical Faustian deal, in which the protagonist sells his soul into an eternity of suffering and slavery in return for a finite degree of material success, is an unappealing bargain to say the least. This is something that has always failed to ring true in such tales. It is hard to imagine anyone being arithmetically challenged enough to see this as a good deal. On the other hand, replace the direct forfeiture of one's soul with a simple act of murder, and swap material gain for salvation from a horrible, lingering, identity-consuming demise, and suddenly things become far less clear-cut. A moment of pain quickly ended, a smattering of grief among those who knew the victim, a prickling of the perpetrator's conscience. All terrible things, but compared to the protracted horrors of senile dementia, these almost begin to look like a fair price to pay. What would you do, listener, if I were he who makes bargains, and my goal was to spread chaos and discord amongst mankind, Let's just say this is the kind of deal I would strike. Good night, listener. Fear the dark and be glad of the light. <laughs>